Hello, and welcome to this podcast. My name is Scotty Reed. I'm the founder and president of the nonprofit media organization, Black Talk Media Project. I just wanted to come to you all and just share some thoughts on a recent news article I saw concerning Byron Allen. I hadn't seen his name in the news since he had filed that lawsuit against Comcast alleging discrimination. I believe he was using something like um, civil rights law pertaining to business, business deals. It isn't anything pertaining to like what Dr. King and them fought for the uh, 64 civil rights bill, but this one was passed in the 1800s and it was a good bill. And he used that um, law, or I should say a good law. It was a bill first, but it became law. Um, a lot of us didn't even know about that law. Um, I believe it's the 1877 uh, Civil Rights Act. I could be incorrect about that, but he used that law to file a lawsuit, a discrimination lawsuit against Comcast in saying that, you know, they didn't want to pick up his car shows, his cooking shows, his pet TV shows, um, those type of shows, and said it was because he was Black. Um, so he owns a number of black media properties, but that was the last time I had seen him really in the news, you know, and so I saw this particular news item on social media with some um, other black people applauding his latest purchase in the corporate uh, media sphere, and I'm just simply like, I'm not celebrating that. I'm not celebrating this dude. I remember when all of that went down and people were saying he had a weak case and you have a conservative dominated uh, Supreme Court. And if they rule against him, this is going to pretty much gut that 1877 Civil Rights Act. I'm sorry if I had the year incorrect, but it was in the 1800s during Reconstruction uh, period here in the United States. And what do you know? He did lose. It was a very weak case. He did lose, and he set a precedence with the Supreme Court on how they might rule in future uh, cases of, of discrimination. You know, Comcast, which I'm no fan of, I'm certainly not a fan of any corporate media, but Comcast was saying in their arguments that it has nothing to do with his skin color. It has to do with the cookie cutter programming that he's producing, and they just didn't think it was of high quality. Okay, so anyway, again, this news item pops up and I'm, I'm like, why should I celebrate him? He's not doing anything for black media. I do remember he created that nonprofit that's supposed to ha help um, independent black media, really not black media, but black owners, black owned media, black owned media and black media. I think we have to make a distinction just as well as when we talk about these radio stations that target the black community but aren't owned by black people but you know i'm just reminded right now what mr fuller said and i'm speaking of neely fuller who came up with the compensatory uh code book on how to i guess you know maneuver in a world of racism and white supremacy but i'm reminded by something he said if you don't believe in practicing justice, all that Afrocentric stuff, it don't matter. If you're not practicing justice, what do it matter? You talking about you black and you proud and you're not practicing justice. And certainly there has been no justice that we have seen really in the production of corporate media. So, you know, I just wanted to delve a little deeper into this. You know, I'm just not into black billionaire I'm not a capitalist, let me put it that way. I know we live in a system that works off of capitalism and I'm not against people coming up with ideals, coming up with inventions and products and making a profit off of them. That's the system that we were born into. It is by no means the best system and as it has produced, I think we can see a tremendous inequality not just along racial lines, but, you know, along class lines. But let's not forget, you know, slavery was a capitalist enterprise. So not really big into capitalism. If I was, I would have created Black Talk Radio Network, an award-winning 
um, black digital radio and podcasting platform as a for-profit entity and not just one of the media projects of the nonprofit black talk media project. I've tried to follow the model of you, let's say national public radio, which is over 90% of their budget comes from the listeners. And that is how I've tried to operate asking the people who download the media, you know, thousands and thousands of downloads a day. Okay. Um, consuming the media who find value in the media to make a contribution to the nonprofit, a tax deductible donation. And so that's how I've tried to survive and operate. I've been surviving and operating for 13 years. I am by no means thriving and we could expand our media reach with uh, independent platforms targeting communities to replace the black radio terrestrial radio stations that we lost that played a big role in the civil rights movement and the black power movement with local individuals being able to discuss local issues facing that community as well as have national you know figures come through and visit that station and talk about issues that's common you know, to oppress people. So that's the motto that I have tried to uh, follow and I will continue to follow as long as I can. Now, I have been forced to, because of a lack of donations, to monetize some of the media. And I've tried to only pick certain categories of advertisement that is ethical, okay? Um, but that's only because I was forced to. If I could be ad free, I certainly would. And you don't see a whole lot of ads on Black Talk Radio Network or any of the podcast feeds. Okay. And so, you know, that's the challenge of operating in a capitalist society. A lot of these corporations do not have good business practices, whether or not they're exploiting the labor of oppressed people all over the planet or whether they're exploiting the labor of their employees here in the United States. If I can get get by without advertising for those type of business, I would love, I, I, I've been doing it. I've been doing it and I'll continue to do it again. It is only because I believe this pandemic and our donations going down that I've been forced to look at alternative um, means of revenue to bring into the nonprofit so we can continue our work. But getting back to Byron Allen, you know, let, let me, um, for those that's watching the video, let me share my screen with you and just revisit some of this with Byron Allen. Now, again, Byron Allen did not create the National Association of African American Owned Media until three. I think it was three months that Bloomberg reported three months before he fought, filed his lawsuit against Comcast. And even then I felt like, hey, he just doing this to gin up support, black support for his lawsuit. And he was going on all these black platforms and he does, I believe own, I can't think of the name right now. Is it the grid? I believe he owns the grid. And they were writing articles in support of his lawsuit, but they did put a disclaimer saying that, hey, he owns this platform. But he was going on every black targeted platform he could to promote his lawsuit and acting like, you know, this is gonna be a win for, for all black media producers. Um, the National Association of African American Owned Media, when all of that was going on, I had made inquiries into them about their membership. You know, what's, what's your membership status? What does it take to become part of this association that's supposed to help black media? I never heard back from them. I never heard from my heard from them in my request to interview Byron Allen and ask him tough questions about, is this really smart to put that civil rights, you know, law up against a, a conservative dominated Supreme Court being that, you know, people are saying you got a weak case, you know, so no, he, I, I didn't hear from them. I didn't hear from them. So as far as I'm concerned, they don't even have a media membership. They don't have me media partners or something like, let's say the NAACP where you can become a member. Okay. And so 
you know, I have to correct something that I said earlier about I hadn't heard anything about him trying to do anything for black media. I had made that on a social media, I made that comment on a social media post, but I stand corrected. He is trying to get white dollars into the hands of black owned media. Again, just cause it's black owned media don't mean that it's media that's uplifting black people or informing us about the issues that we, we um, need to be hearing about and discussing. And a lot of times, you know, black media hasn't historically hasn't been supported by a number of these comp, uh, corporations is because of their stance on civil rights and, and the oppression of African Americans. That's one of the reasons why you've lost all these black newspapers. This is one of the reasons we've lost all of these black terrestrial radio stations. Okay. And, and they don't want to, they don't want to support something that is going to instill ideals and inspire people towards liberation. All right. So, but I stand corrected. He is trying to get corporate media dollars into the hands of black owned corporate media and a lot of black owned corporate media. I can't even name any really. That's targeting black people, BET? No, Bob Johnson built that and sold it to Viacom, a, a white owned corporation for a seat on for a bunch of currency and a seat on their board. And people have told me BET has suffered as a result of that ownership transfer. Okay. So, you know, Byron Allen has been, as you can see from some of these headlines on his platform for his nonprofit, Byron Allen led effort to funnel ad dollars to black owned media, lock support from a second giant holding company, Group M. This is the conversation white America doesn't want to have. TV news check, webinar, black owned media matters. Byron Allen, April Ryan, Butch Graves, and Roland Martin. And, and again, you know, Roland Martin got kicked off of corporate media. Um, I think it was what? TV one, TV news one, something like that, because I heard conflicting reports on that. But it was after he controversially and unethically shared questions with the Clinton campaign in advance of a debate that she was going to have with Bernie Sanders. And, and so, you know, Roland Martin, for all the good he does, he still is a vulture capitalist. He's still a black capitalist and he looking to, you know, put more butter biscuits on his plate by, by, I guess you would call it cozying up to the white power structure. All right. And so, yeah, then, he, you know, Verizon agrees to increase spending with black owned media, Byron Allen and Verizon partner on black owned media summit set for many, but where is all this black owned media that he's talking about? He's talking about his property. He's the biggest black owned media, not, not black targeted media, but he's the owner of all these various media properties like the Weather Channel. Um, he just bought the ABC affiliate. Again, this isn't like he's producing programming along the lines of BET in its early days when it was first founded, you know, with things like Teen Summit. I mean, it was a lot of positive programming on BET back in the day. I don't think anyone can, can deny that. So, you know, there's not a lot of black radio stations. The last black radio station I was in contact with was Richmond, Virginia, Preston Brown. But if I'm not mistaken, he was forced to sell because of lack of advertisement. So what Byron Allen is doing here is going with it. He can talk tough on the internet all he want to, but listen, He's going to white people to get them to support black media. He who pays the piper names the tune. We need to be funding our own media so that we are in control and nobody else is asserting undue influence on us. All right. So another person who saw my social media post reminded me of what Byron Allen said about when he was asked why he don't buy a black owned media or buy a black media channel or target black people with a station, 
You know, Malcolm X said media is the most powerful entity on the face of the planet. It can control the minds of the masses. It makes the innocent look guilty and the guilty look innocent. And that's power. So this is what he had had to say. Let me blow this up and play this. My friend who ran, uh, he runs uh, uh, Encompass, which satellites the networks. He said, you should buy the Weather Channel. I used to work at the Weather Channel. People don't realize how important it is. It's a cash cow, makes hundreds of millions of dollars, great cash flow, EBITDA, blah, blah, blah. And uh, he said, you should buy it. And I, we took a look at it and we said, you know what, we should buy it. And we closed and I said, it will help. It was uh, really uh, transformative. It's the largest cable network, not owned by a conglomerate. It's uh, the first cable network that's general market, that's owned by an African-American. And I always said, you know, that, you know, I don't want to play in the Negro Leagues. I want to play in the global leagues. And I want, yeah. yeah, yeah. So I wanted to send the message really loud and clear. I'm not in a, and that's a fine box. I'm not in that box. I'm chasing trillions, not millions. Yes. And so yeah. I want. And so there it go. There, there it is. There you go. I'm tracing trillions. I don't want to play in the Negro leagues. I don't care about the programming or the lack of programming that is targeting black people to edify them, to uplift them, to educate them. I'm out. I'm all about the dollar, the almighty dollar, you know, um, whether people like it or not, I am a Christian, even though I don't wear my, my spiritual beliefs on my uh, sleeve, but I do believe what the scripture says when it says the love of money is the root of all evil. So here he is because of his love of money, trashing media owned by black people, making content for black people, okay? So billionaires do not impress me. I, I don't think billionaires too should exist. You know, that's one of the conversations that I was having uh, with my last uh, guest and where we were talking about Mansa Musa, the Mali King, who is known to be the richest man in the world, but nobody wants to talk about how he obtained all that gold. And like my guest said on that past podcast, he didn't mind it himself. He was known as one of the biggest slave traders and imperialists on the continent of Africa. And, and again, a lot of people don't want to hear that, that truth because we're so starved for positive black images that any, any wealthy black person will do because we are trying to compete with, you know, the Bill Gates of the world or, or the other wealthy white, white people. Again, how are you obtaining this wealth? I think ethics matter. I think if you're exploiting people so that you can hoard a tremendous amount of wealth, that's, that's not something I want to aspire to, okay? And again, what is, what is his nonprofit doing? Is he providing any grants to, let's say, nonprofit media organizations like the Black Talk Media Project so that we can replace what we've lost in terrestrial radio stations with digital radio platforms targeting specific communities uplifting local voices? No. It says right there on his website, he's just chasing dollars from white corporations to put into hands of African Americans who own media. Whether or not it's, it's targeting um, black people or trying to uplift black voices don't matter. He's just chasing the dollars. He wants to be the first trillionaire. That's why he don't play in the Negro Leagues. All right, that's all I have to say. Please support the production of independent black media by making a tax deductible donation today to the Black Talk Media Project so that we can not only maintain Black Talk Radio Network, btrcommunity.com, but launch new platforms like RVA Soul, 
which is a platform we've recently launched. We're still working on it, actually ran into some problems here uh, lately. And so I have to redo the whole thing, but I'm gonna get it done. But we need these localized platforms. And the only way that we can do it and do it right is with your support. Whether you're black, white, whatever, we welcome all support because it doesn't matter of your, your skin color. The only thing that matters is whether or not you believe in practicing justice. Peace and blessings to all.